What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll wrap up our Twitter bot by deploying it onto a remote server. So it just keeps running continuously there rather than having to, do, having to keep having to run it all the time on our local setup. So I will be using Heroku to deploy our bot. And if you don't know what Heroku is, it's basically a platform as a service like provider. For our sense, it just allows us to run our code somewhere else uh, without of having us to like keep it running all the time. But in order to install it um, or in order to use it, you first need a Heroku account and also install the Heroku CLI onto your machine. So for Mac OS and Ubuntu, you have these two commands. And for Windows, you have the 64 and 32 bit installer. So I'm not going to go through the whole installation process, but um, as it's fairly straightforward, uh, but if you are wanting to follow along with this, or if you are wanting to deploy it onto Heroku, I definitely create an account and also install the CLI. So once you've installed Heroku and you've created an account, the first thing that we want to do is jump back into the source code and make sure that your Python environment is active or you've activated it for this project and go into the source directory um, where we've stored our or written our code. So we want to create this requirements.txt file and this will just be a text file documenting all the third party libraries that we've made use of. And in order to do that, we just need to type in pip freeze greater than sign and then requirements.txt like so. And it has to be called requirements.txt as Heroku will look for this, for this file. We just hit enter there. And you'll see here that a requirements.txt file has been created, which shows all the libraries that we're making use of. And yeah, so that's a requirements.txt file. We also want to create another file called um, the runtime.txt file. So all you have to do is do touch uh, or create the file name itself, and then just type in, um, it's the runtime txt just like that and it has to again be called runtime.txt so inside this we need to write just one line and we need to specify the version or of uh, or the python version that we're making use of uh, sometimes it's not that important but it's it's usually a good practice to just um, have this under your control that way it doesn't update without you saying so and in our case 3.94 so that's really it. That's the requirements.txt file and the runtime file. We can, so these two files will kind of tell our Heroku server um, what, uh, what, the, what it needs to install and the kind of Python version that it will be running on. So once we've got that, the next thing we need to do is create our, or initialize a git repo within our source folder. So we can just do that by doing git init, like so. And we've gone ahead and created our Git repository and you'll see if you're using VS code and you have Git uh, as an extension, you'll see all these files light up with different colors. So now um, one good thing to have is also our .gitignore file. And this will just tell Git all the files to ignore. For example, we don't want to deploy our .env file as like these variables will be passing in um, through like our Heroku config, which I'll show you later. So the best thing here is to just go onto Google and type in git ignore. And it's usually the first one that you'll see. And this is just copy the entire thing. As I think by default, uh, GitHub has this git ignore file for any Python projects and just paste that into the git ignore file like so. So yeah, we've got our git ignore file and we've got our runtime files. I'm just going to close all these open editors. And now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and log in to Heroku. So if you have it installed, you can use this command called Heroku and then login. You'll get this message, press any key to open up the browser to log in or Q to exit. I'm just going to hit enter. And yep, log in like so. Yep, I've already entered my um, email and password, 
but uh, if you haven't, you'll just see the uh, login, a uh, standard login form, and then it will just redirect you back here. Just go clear that. So that's um, created or allowed us to log into Heroku. The next thing we want to do is create our Hoku, Heroku app. And the simplest way is really simple. All you have to do is type in Heroku and then create like so. And that will be um, this link here. If you, if you go back to your Heroku um, account, so I'm just going to go log in. And you should see the name. So in my case, it was Glacial Forest 94706. And that's this one here. So you should see that once you hit Heroku Create. And yet nothing's been deployed yet. So there's yeah, nothing here to see. So the next step is to create our proc file. And our proc file is basically the command we'll give our server to run. So we won't be deploying a web app. So we won't be setting a, like our, creating a web app or telling it to run a web app inside our prop file, but we will create a worker. So just create this file, uh, prop file uh, with no extensions. And you, if you're using VS code, you will see this kind of um, icon show up, this Heroku icon. And in here, all it, all it takes is just one line so we're going to create a worker. So we specify worker and then we want it to run the command Python and then the name of the, where the Twitter bot is. So in my case, twitterbot.py. Just like how we've been running it, like on our local setup. So we just do Python Twitter bot. That's basically what this is doing. And this twitterbot.py will just keep on running uh, this here. So I'll write the tweet, wait 30 minutes, post an image, wait 30 minutes, write a tweet, etc. So yeah, that's the prop file. Now we can go ahead and actually start um, setting up our Heroku app. So give it the environment variables like our Unsplash ID the, uh, and the Twitter API keys. So now the step is to add our environment variables into our Heroku server. So we have access key and the Twitter API keys uh, and with the git ignore, we don't deploy the .env file. So we want to put these over or like paste them into our server. So the first thing is go to the, oops, go to the uh, Heroku or Heroku dashboard for the project, in my case, the Glacial Forest, and then head over to settings. You can do this through the command line. Uh, I It's yeah, completely up to you, but I prefer doing it through the web interface. So you click on this reveal config vars or re reveal config variables. And this is where you will put in the key and the value. So the first one is our access key, which should have been named unsplash access key to uh, yeah, get an understanding of what that key actually is. But um, yeah, so just paste that in. So the key being access key and the value being the key itself. Just add that in. The next one is the Twitter API key. So just copy that, paste that in as the key, the same for value. Oops, copy that into here. And then the Twitter API secret key. And apologies for all the screen switching. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a tedious job. Um, but yeah, I guess it takes at least five minutes max or probably even less, uh, access token and yeah, just the value for that. And the last one we need is the Twitter access token secret and just paste that value in as well. And that should be it. So, that's our, we've saved these now and these are there. So yeah, like I said, you can do it through the command line. I, I can't remember what the command actually is. I think it's Heroku config something or set config, um, but however you prefer. But yeah, that's the, um, there's the kind of, the, the environment variables done. Sorry for losing my words. Um, now we can go ahead and 
connect our Git repo to the Heroku uh, server so we can start pushing our app towards it. So in order to connect our local repository with the Heroku repository, we need to go ahead and set, set it. So we can say Heroku and make sure you're inside the source folder. Uh, type in Heroku and then git colon remote dash A and then the name of the app. So in my case, Glacial Forest 97, oops, 94706. So just copy that, paste it in and you'll get this message here. Set git, git remote Heroku to just the URL of your Git repository. Next, you wanna go ahead and commit all those changes. So we can do git commit dash M and the message will be initial deploy. Hit enter, oops, no, actually the first thing is we need to add everything. So let me just clear that. So do git add all and then git commit. M and then dash M and we'll just say initial deploy like so. And you'll see all the files that have been added. You can see here like the .env file hasn't been added as we've included that in our git ignore. Let's clear that. And then we can do git push Heroku and then master. And then you'll just see the build process and hopefully no errors, um, but the build process for our Twitter bot. So it's just making necessary installments. Yeah, looking at our requirements.txt file, installing everything. So like here you can see downloading TweePy and launching it. And soon we should be good to go. <clears throat> Yeah, so yeah, if hopefully everything worked out smoothly for you. Um, so you got the same kind of output that I did and you didn't get any errors. The last thing we wanna do, however, is we need to enter this last command. And this command is Heroku and then PS colon scale worker equals one. And this kind of loaded command is basically saying, or means that we have one server that will just currently run our app. So we just have this one thing and this is where our bot will live. So make sure you enter that because I think naturally or by default, Heroku will create a web app and uh, or assume that it's a web app. In our case, we've created a worker which is not a web app. So you need to specify that on this server, just run the worker and then hit enter. And there you go. So we can head back and we can check out, if you go into overview, you'll see like this kind of the activity and we can go over to, if you click on more, this drop down here and then click on view logs. You'll see, you should see hopefully something like this. So first you saw this like scale to worker um, and that's what we did just now. And we can go back to our Twitter app. Just hit refresh. And there we go, 29 seconds ago, we get this tweet here. And if we wait 30 minutes, then we'll see the image. But that's the, the bot like now alive. And we don't need to run this locally, which is fantastic. And um, the other thing, and this is the kind of big catch that comes with Heroku, you can pay for it. So you can pay for the server and I'm not like advertising it or anything like that. Um, but the Heroku app will fall asleep after a certain number of minutes or a certain time. And when it falls asleep, that basically means that the app itself, like the, the Twitter bot will stop working. So in order to like combat that, one thing is you can buy like or pay for the server to keep running all the time. Um, or you can use something like uptime robot, which will monitor and like kind of ping the endpoint of our app. So if you remember like here, the app itself has an endpoint. So if we click open app, 
like it's this thing here. So this is our endpoint, like obviously it's not a web app, there's nothing here to, to display as it's just a worker that's running behind the scenes. But you, the bot will fall asleep. So you will have to keep hitting this URL from time to time to stay awake, for it to stay awake. You can use something like Uptown Robot. There's some other ones out there as well. And um, yeah, that will just keep your service running or your work or your Twitter bot running. However, the kind of other catch that come with that comes with that is that after like this will you have like credits that Heroku gives to you for free. And then once those credits run out, you can't your server will kind of die and then it will restart the next month. So in this case, if you're going with everything that we've used here and not using um, like not paying for um, like our server to run all the time, then um, and you end up using something like Uptown Robot, then yours, your bot will basically run for about half a month and then die. So let's say, for example, you start your bot on the first of the month, it might run to the 15th and then it will die until and then it will come back alive at the beginning of the next month, next month, run for 15 days and die and so on and so forth. So if you do want your app to um, be there and like keep running all the time, then I would recommend paying for the server. It's not that expensive. You only pay for what you use. So that's the kind of scheme that's set up with Heroku. Um, so yeah, I would recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, this is how you can go about deploying onto Heroku. And um, hopefully if you followed along with this tutorial, you've managed to do that. And um, yeah, <clears throat> if you enjoyed this video and look for, are uh, looking forward for more kind of content regarding programming, please subscribe, leave a like. I also have a Discord channel, so that's in the description. If you wanna pop by, say hello, feel free to do that. Have any recommendations, or if you're working on a project that you want help with, then um, there is kind of a growing number of people helping out on that channel. So feel free to ask for help there too, or any recommendations for a video. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in my future videos.